This is the last part of key issue one, biotechnology or there's something wrong with this banana. The latest trend in agriculture is biotechnology and genetic engineering. Some people consider it part of the third agricultural revolution, while others feel that it is a part of the fourth agricultural revolution. Biotechnology is the manipulation of biological organisms for human use. This includes manipulating DNA, cloning, cell fusion, and embryo transfer. A GMO is any organism that has a different characteristic due to altered DNA. We make GMOs because they are useful to us. Useful traits in plants include sweetness or taste, nutrition, appearance, drought, tolerance, and longer shelf life. It is also useful if plants can survive pests and weed killers. Here are some examples of GMO crops. BT cotton is resistant to pests. Flavor Saver tomatoes were the first GMO crops to be approved for human consumption. They stay fresh longer than other tomatoes. Roundup Ready soybeans are resistant to weed killers. This allows farmers to spray weed killers on the fields that already have these soybeans growing on them. Lastly, there is also flood resistant rice. Did you know that genetically modified organisms are found in 75% of all grocery store items? This is because corn and soybeans are genetically modified and can be found in most processed foods. Here's a list of other biotech foods in the United States. Here are some charts that show how GMOs have been increasing in the United States and a chart showing percentage of GMO crops in 2009. Here's a chart showing the top four GMO producers. They accounted for 99% of the GMOs in 2001. You may have noticed on the last slide that the products were labeled as containing genetically modified organisms. Genetically modified products must be labeled by law in Europe, but not in the United States. This has led to a lot of controversy as people want to know what they're eating. The tan countries on this map require labeling for biotech products. The reddish countries have partial or total bans on importing biotech products. In this map, GMO exporting countries are colored blue, GMO importing countries are colored red, and those that are starting to use GMO crops are in yellow. GMO products have diffused despite the concerns of health scientists, environmentalists, and consumers. This map shows how many acres of cropland are dedicated to biotech products in the biggest biotech producing countries. Okay, so we know what a GMO is. How do you make one? There are two different methods. The traditional method is selective breeding. The modern method requires direct modification of DNA to get the desired result. In order to better understand the methods for making GMO, we are going to use corn as an example because it is the most common crop in the United States. For example, which one of these does not have corn in it? I'll give you a second. The answer is the Ben and Jerry's ice cream. It is sort of a trick question because most ice cream has sweeteners made from corn, but Ben and Jerry's is organic ice cream in this case, and it does not contain corn products. Anyhow, let's look at the traditional method for making GMOs. Native Americans raise corn over time to produce fewer, bigger ears of corn without the hard casing around each kernel that wild varieties had. As you can see, the cobs became much, much bigger over time. This is the old way of doing things. There is, however, a science to this process. Here's how it works. Let's say that farmer A grows tall corn plants with white kernels, and farmer B grows short corn plants with yellow kernels. Tall corn with yellow kernels would result in the highest yield and the best sales. If we cross-pollinate these two plants, we can make a hybrid plant that has both desirable characteristics. A hybrid plant shows characteristics of both parental plants. Most corn hybrids are from crosses between pest and herbicide resistant plants. You may know from biology that Gregor Mendel described this process using a Punnett square. This is an example of a Punnett square for the situation that we just described. In this case, we are going to crossbreed that tall plant with the plant that has yellow kernels 
and get a plant that is both tall and has yellow kernels. So that's the old-fashioned way. How do we do it now? Basically, you transfer a gene from one organism to another without crossing. You can actually mix genes from different species this way. We will use pest-resistant corn or BT corn for our example. The BT toxin is a bacteria that kills corn borers. There is a picture of one of those nasty looking guys on the piece of corn there below. When a corn borer eats the bacteria, the toxin forms crystals inside the stomach that literally causes its intestinal system to explode. Pretty cool. Anyhow, scientists have been able to give corn the same characteristic by putting the BT toxin into a plant parasite. The parasite then transfers the BT toxin gene to the plant and the corn borer is no longer a problem. Of course, it's a bit more complicated than that, but this is in biology class. Other types of genetically engineered corn are resistant to weed killers. Some have amino acids that make corn healthier for livestock. Remember, cows are supposed to eat grass, not corn. Other types of GMO corn have terminator genes that won't allow their seeds to grow more than once, forcing farmers to buy new seed each year. This is very controversial in the farm world. Companies that develop GMO plants try to protect the investment they made in developing the plant. It gets really messy when neighboring fields cross-pollinate with GMO plants and corporations are not afraid to sue those that grow their plants without paying for them, even if it's by accident. Genetic engineering is not just for plants. Hybrid cattle have been developed to help them adapt to specific places. Animals can be ejected with hormones and also cloned. As you know, animals that produce more and have consistent size and weight are important to agribusiness. You can even buy GE animals as pets, like glowfish. There are many advantages to using biotechnology or no one would be doing it. Advantages include higher yields, better nutrition, faster ripening time, better taste, and cheaper products. They are even working on making non-allergenic plants so that people with allergies could enjoy food that they once couldn't eat. Also, GMOs can reduce the need for fertilizers and some believe they are crucial to feeding the world's population, much to the chagrin of Thomas Malthus. Biotechnology also has its disadvantages. Poor countries on the periphery can't afford them, and only a handful of corporations control them. We don't know much about the negative health effects of GMOs. They could make antibiotics less effective, lead to new toxins, introduce allergens, or lead to other health problems. There are also environmental concerns. We could contaminate the plants we have and cause irreversible damage to ecosystems. Lastly, some people don't believe that it is right to manipulate nature this way. There are many ethical concerns with biotechnology. These are the things that you should take away from the last two presentations. Number one, what is agribusiness? Number two, what is vertical integration? Number three, give an example of a commodity chain from start to finish. Number four, what are the positives and negatives of agribusiness? Number five, what is a GMO? Number six, what are the two ways to make a GMO? Number seven, what are the pros and cons of biotechnology? And lastly, what is it called when a farmer gets mad on his tractor? Field rage. I hope you enjoyed that presentation. Next up, we're gonna be looking at the different types of farming in LDCs and MDCs. Stop.